All right. These awkward silence are really great. Um, should, should we go? Yep. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody, for attending. Let's start with an introduction. So what I'm going to talk today is a little bit of the use cases at the Splunk, now a Cisco company. Uh, when we integrated Argo and we integrated all of the Argo projects, we started it with Argo workflows, but we went to CD, rollouts, events, etc. Everything we integrated. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about why the Splunk use cases are a little bit specific uh, compared with other new companies or new application services because we still have a monolithic application, which is Splunk itself. So um, my name is Edgar Magana, a senior principal engineer at the Cisco company now. Uh, so let's start with the difference of other microservices applications at Splunk. We have two main product offerings. We have a lot of other applications, but the main core of Splunk is on-premise. So basically, you like, uh, download the binary and do all the DevOps for yourself. And we have Enterprise Cloud. That actually is something that we manage on your behalf, but it's actually in the cloud. It's the same software. The difference is we release uh, more frequent versions in the Enterprise Cloud than what we do on the premise, but it's exactly the same. And the applications that we add to these offerings are exactly the same. Uh, but we need to do DevOps for these two areas. And the difference is, for the on-premise, we have to support other architectures like Linux, Windows, IAX, etc. For the cloud, is basically only Linux because we manage it. Uh, what are the challenges that we had at the beginning? Imagine that you have a very um, C++ code and a monolithic repo that you have in a certain moment to start testing for on-premise deployments, but also the same code needs to be deployed and tested for the cloud. And in the cloud, we start optimization, right? Decomposing the monolithic, and that start creating a different kind of CI use cases. And every time that we need to do a full regression test, we have to build a Splunk stack. And there are different configurations of the Splunk stack, so we have to create multiple Splunk stack at the same time. The complexity of the pipelines became so difficult for any kind of uh, CI system such as GitLab or GitHub Actions that we needed to start using something else. And the answer was Argo workflows. We also have a set of new applications that they were replacing these monolithic decomposed sections into microservices and we lack of these single panel glass for monitoring and tracking, uh, rollbacks, uh, uh, we didn't have also uh, blue-green strategies, canary, etc. So now you can imagine where we're going, right? So basically we adopted Workflow Engine, we actually create our own brand called WFE, even logo, etc. cetera, uh, but it's just powered by uh, Argo projects and a lot of hard coding um, of the uh, uh, configuration for each one of the projects, like strong security, strong RBAC, uh, resilience, high availability. Even we have a plan for disaster recovery because now Workflow Engine, which is the collection of these projects, became our path to production for uh, microservices and also for Splunk itself. We didn't stop there. With the evolution of our workflows, we discovered that actually it was so easy to create it as a platform. So we don't create the workflows for our internal users. We support the workflow engine and they create the workflows. And eventually our technical operations team say, you know, I have a lot of run books that I had to read, uh, to run in the fleet to fix something, to add an indexer for our customers, to actually increase capacity in a region or our cloud provider. What if we don't start using all those workflows that you had it? So they did it. So one more use case that we have is actually for technical operations to do our Google workflows. Um, one of the beauties that we have is uh, we created workflow templates. And in the previous session, actually, one of my uh, co-workers, Gregor, uh, mentioned something about like, we use, this is the typical workflow that you, you, we use over and over the time, right? Just the typical creating a stack. But it's not just create a stack, hit and run. You have to validate it. It takes some time to create it. Remember, this is like large instances, especially when we do performance regression tests. You create large instances, they take time. You have to download the binary, it takes time. You have to run the binary, configure it, do some validation checks, etc. It takes time. If you just have a single 
uh, API to create the stack, leave it, you have to start checking. It was impossible, the stacks were not ready, the um, regression tests were taking forever. So we created the templates to actually create the stack, validate it, it checks everything in behalf of the end user. In this case, could be the PSR team, QB, could be the QA team. We also have this premium application that you heard about it, ITSI and EC. Uh, ES, Enterprise Security, they also need stacks to do the regression tests of their own applications. So that become the most popular template in our use case and uh, we create a lot of resilience. We actually have uh, our first open source contribution in the Argo Workforce project to, send, uh, to fix on optimization. Something that a lot of people is afraid of adopting an open source project is how difficult will be to make it production ready, to make it general availability, to pass this word that everybody who is in DevOps is afraid of, compliance. We went through it. What we can tell you is like takes time. We are not using any vendor. We are using pure open source as it is. We downloaded the source, blue code, we create our own containers, and we uh, deploy it with our own mechanisms. Actually, we use like a little bit of dog footing because we use Argo CD to deploy Argo workflows for all these use cases. And we pass all this compliance. This is nothing that you didn't, so, like, didn't see before, right? Um, encryption uh, in transit, in encryption in the database, uh, evidence of uh, key rotation, uh, two, uh, two factor authentication, etc. All those kind of things. What I want to tell you is that they went all true. Yes, it's not that straightforward. Some of them they don't even apply because some of these are very specific when you are managing customer traffic. But in general, it just take a little bit of effort, and it went through for all of them. We went for we started with workflows. We went for CD. We actually implemented rollouts, and we are right now in the final stages for the Ago events. So now we are creating this concept of the async tool. A lot of our use cases, they have a pipeline doing something. And what do you do? You connected a webhook, and that webhook connected to a message bus. And everybody was implementing the same message bus in the whole company. And I'm pretty sure you work for a large company, you end up in very similar situations. So we replace that to say, let's do the copy paste. We provide you the message boost as a platform, which is behind Argo events. You create your webhook, you don't worry about that boost, and you implement your workflow to whatever you do. So all that flow, the communication, is already implemented with Argo events and Argo workflows. And again, we deploy everything via Argo CD. So summary, use cases, we're extending our CI. We actually very proudly replace every single Jenkins job, Jenkins server in the whole infrastructure. Everything is Argo workflows. We implement the regression tests. We run 10,000 of regression tests weekly. Uh, performance, as I said before, premium application, ITSI, and enterprise security, uh, data ingestion. We, I mean, that's the critical part of Splunk, right? Uh, massive terabytes of data ingesting in our indexers to be sent to our for water. And the CD experience, right? Providing these uh, dynamic templates that in the back end are managed by Argo CD so we can actually have full visibility on this in the resources in Kubernetes. And um, we are in the process of the advanced uh, strategies, blue, green. It's uh, the one that we use for the FAO, but we want to go beyond that. We want to use Canary ones. Um, orchestration and automation. We are, uh, as I mentioned before, technical operation. Um, we are implemented everything as a workflow and the platform is already in production compliance to do that. And uh, we automated all these uh, pipelines, as, uh, the synchronous toolkit. We did integration, we have open source apps, so we had to integrate it with our gap environment. So we actually have another Argo workflow instance connected with GitHub for open source contribution that is totally isolated and are gapped for our GitLab pipelines. And with all that, with 33 seconds left, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much, folks. If I, um, so we have a few minutes for any questions that you may have. If anyone just kind of raise your hand. Yep. Did you run into? Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Did we? Did you run into any resistance from the uh, the Jenkins Mafia when you were proposing that you replace it with <laughs> workflows? <laughs> no, we not. We did not. For the Jenkins Mafia, we did not. It was so broken. It was so difficult to manage. It was everybody was on in their own servers. So we would offer a platform as a service. They all. We have more resistance with the Argo CD for the Kubernetes rollout applications because that was another team who actually owned the Kubernetes team. But we just provide the POC, the use case justification, and it went through. And by the way, everybody, uh, if you want to contact me via email or LinkedIn or something like that, I'm not as fancy as barcodes, but you can email me and I will reply back. All right, maybe you have time for maybe one more if, if there's any. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, I'm a pipeline expert. Okay. <laughs> hey, Edgar, it's Kalen from PipeKit. Um, yeah, on the Jenkins side, I was wondering how long the Jenkins migration took you all, um, taking all the teams with independent you know, deployments to a centralized workflows platform. Yeah, that's a, a good one. It took <laughs> quite a bit. Um, it, was, it wasn't about the technology. It was a cultural change because we did not want to own the workflows. We wanted to own the platform, but the idea is like we provide, and this is a funny and very cool thing about all these Argo projects. We created a repo in Argo CD, and all the templates were pointed to that. So via Argo CD, we deployed their Argo workflows as a template in their Argo application so they can have it ready. And we explained the whole process, but it was so new for them. It was so different, right? The GitOps model for them was something that they were not used to. Uh, so it was mostly evangelization, um, a learning experience. In general, we ended up spending almost a year in the whole transition, but uh, the impediment or the, the, the part that takes more is, is just, you know, I have to learn all these new things. I don't even know what GitOps. I'm still learning DevOps and you want to give me GitOps, so that was the part. Thank you. All right, thank you, everyone. All right, thank you, folks. See you next one.